Welcome to Three Steps. This is the first part of a three-part interview with Zan Perion. He runs a company called Ars Amorata, and he has a book called The Alabaster Girl, which is his, his love letter to women. And I met Zan about six or seven years ago. And when I met him, he, we went to one of his mansions where he was teaching workshops. And as it turns out, he's not exactly a teacher per se, but more or less a storyteller, and he leads by example. And what he does is he teaches his students how to be more embodied and how to speak from their truth and from their body and how to create more fulfilling relationships. Now, what's also funny is, this is one of the first interviews that I did. This goes back last year when I was starting this process out and figuring out my questions and figuring out how I was gonna do this stuff. And so you get to see the beta version of how Three Steps was being born. Uh, so in it, I asked him what exactly does it mean to be a man today? And um, he gave his answer, but he also started talking about this men's retreat he went to. And now during a ceremony in the men's retreat, he discovered that he didn't have any male role models. He didn't have any mentors or teachers. Uh, that he could remember or think on and that surprised him and it also rocked him to his core a little bit and it also showed him that something he hadn't thought about which is a lot of men don't have good male mentors or teachers growing up it's not an uncommon thing so I asked him about trust and you know trusting men and is trust given or is it earned and he has a really good answer for this one and then we went back to the conversation about mentors and he gave this really surprising answer for exactly who has taught him about masculinity and about being a man. All right, so let's get inside and get to it. Hi, welcome. Uh, John, obviously, and this is Zan. Hello. Hi, and um, so we're talking about masculinity. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start with the first question, which is kind of the obvious one. Um, what does it mean to you to be a man? Okay. Well, I think, uh, truthfully, it's taking responsibility for your own life. Mm. That's the essence of it, it's like, not waiting for other people to, make, to be nice to you, mm -hmm. not waiting for other people to take care of things for you and just taking responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, it's, this modern age is so victimized. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think a real man takes responsibility and says, you know, I'm gonna sort this out somehow. Yeah. Right, I think that's the essence of it to me. How did you come to that thinking or that process? Wow, well, I didn't have anybody to ever instruct me. I didn't have a, a role model or a father figure in my life ever. Mm -hmm. And so I had to kind of uh, raise myself, I guess, you know? I had to raise myself and, and come up with um, uh, this kind of a concept of responsibility, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. um, just by, I don't know, thinking about it, I guess. Like, mm -hmm. I never had it. I never had a hero to look up to. I never had a yeah. I never had a teacher. Yeah. You, you didn't know? grow up with media also, because like I, I lived for my first, first like three years of like, like my seminal years, you know, the, yeah. that young before your, your tweens, um, we didn't have cable. We didn't have to, right, you know, right. electricity, for fuck's sake. You know, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I didn't have a lot of TV influence then. Yeah, I didn't either at yeah. all. Uh, and I'm pre-internet too, so. Yeah, totally. There was no, there was no, I didn't have a TV. I mean, I lived in the forest without electricity. Yeah. And, um, and, and like I said, so my first influences relative to how to live a life or how to relate to women, for instance, was movies. Yeah. Which are completely flawed when it comes to how to, <laughs> how to be, you know, right. a man, for instance. And uh, so I didn't have a, a good instruction or a good toehold on anything. Did you meet mentors at all along the way? No, that's the books? thing. Like, yeah, yeah. I, it, you know, I, I didn't have a mentor, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I was at a leadership retreat 10 years ago, maybe more than that in California, mm -hmm. in the Redwoods, and, and we were just in this, like, we did some exercises, and it was like, a bunch of us in this group. One of the guys said, hey, listen, you know, I was, uh, I did some work down in the, in, in the Peruvian jungle, mm -hmm. and I've got some shaman training, mm -hmm. and he says, well, if you guys want, this evening, we'll, we'll make a man mandala, yeah, mandala on, yeah, the, yeah. on the floor. Yeah, yeah. And we're all, okay, so we, we're all there, and he has got the candles going in this dark, in this, in this yurt. Yeah. And uh, we're all on our knees, and he says, okay, now take these beans, everybody take some beans, mm. and that represents your, your friends in your life. Mm. Now take, um, you know, these two little stones that represent your parents. And what do they mean to you? And, you know, speak their names and put them somewhere in this, 
picture. Mm. And so you know, these feathers represent this, something else, and this, you know. And, um, and he got to the point where he said, okay, now everybody take some of this corn. And this corn represents the teachers you've had. Mm. Like not your teachers, yeah. but the your teachers. teachers, yeah, the big ones. And everybody's like saying names and putting them into the picture. And I'm sitting there and, and I, I was shocked into, into complete stunned silence because I realized I had no teachers. Mm. I couldn't think of a single name mm. that I could put down into the picture. And it, you know, and it, it brought tears to my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I'm not alone. You're not alone. Yeah, it's, that's that's the yeah. big one. Okay, you didn't have mentors, and you didn't no. have a father figure, um, but you did come to conclusions. You well, did come but, yeah. to decisions, and yeah. there was a path to that. So, how did you come to creating the model for yourself of what masculinity meant for you? You know what? You know what? I'll say it this way because it's I've done my whole life. All I've done is try and understand women. I'm, I've been in love with women. My whole, <laughs> it's all I wanted to know. And I've said, not facetiously, because truthfully, that if I have anything that I ha can share with others, it's because of women. Yeah. Women have taught me. Men have never taught me anything. Yeah. I can say nothing. I don't think men have taught me anything. Women have taught me everything I know, not because they are enlightened mm -hmm. and are great teachers. They're just as lost as the men are. Yeah, yep. But by, by sitting in the company of women, and they are responding to me in certain ways or not. And slowly over the years, by interacting with them, I started to get a sense of what it means to be ma masculine in a man. Yeah. And what women are really attracted to. Yes. You know, we think it's this, you know, this accommodating, sensitive, uh, all for her nice guy. And isn't, isn't that at all? No. And so, so yeah, it's been, my proximity to women has taught me, I've never said this before, my proximity to women has, was exactly what taught me anything about masculinity and how to be a man. Yeah. Nothing, no man ever taught me anything. Yeah. That's perfect, man. That's no. brilliant. No, actually, that's great because, I mean, as a man, as a man who was raised by women. Yeah. So, yeah, s single mom, aunt. Um, the men in my life, I didn't trust them. Right. I didn't trust them and therefore I would not buy into what they were trying to tell me because they didn't walk their talk. You know exactly, and so yeah. I couldn't trust that. You didn't see any strength in them. Yeah, yeah. But I'm now in a place where I trust men. Uh -huh. So, um, but I got there through my own journey. I'm curious. Do you trust men? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know what? I trust men there who is sincere and on a path. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. if they want to, you know, go through the motions and you know get in bar fights and talk about sports stuff, I. I have no, no traction there, but if somebody you know, is sincere mm. and they could be completely lost, they could be even angry mm -hmm. about their childhood or, or you know, they could, they could harbor anger towards women as long as they're not hateful mm -hmm. and misogynist and they really want to know, they would love to know a better way, I trust them. Yeah. They could be completely lost, but if, they're, if their heart is sincere, it's a good guy. Yeah, I'm going to derail the normal to topic here because you hit on something that I really like as a topic. <laughs> um, and that's trust. Uh, I have a theory mm -hmm. about trust. I'd like to hear what your theory about trust is. Do you, how does trust work with you? Do you, do people have to earn it? Do they just get it? What's, oh. what's the story on that? That's a good question because I'm, I'm not naive, but I am trustworthy because of the way I've, I've constructed my life, I guess, mm -hmm. until it's demonstrated that that isn't a good person. Mm -hmm. I make assumptions to that point. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm pretty happy guy and I'm pretty full of energy in life. And I, and if I walk into a room and there's people and I, I meet them, I meet them in a way that I think they are. They are. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then if they demonstrate that they're not trustworthy, whether they're man or woman. Yeah. Then, you know, I, I just don't go where my energy is blocked. That's yeah. what it is, right? It's great. It's, that's great. That's a good example. I, for me, um, I, I used to do the trust is earned conversation. Now I just give trust. Like I just trust yeah. you to be who you are and I'm going to trust that what you present to me is the truth, not what you say. Mm -hmm. If, what, the, if <clears throat> what you do and what you say lines up, I'm going to trust you even more. Yeah. But if what you do and say doesn't line up, I'm going to trust that that is where you're at. And when I interact with you again, that's what's going to be. I also will trust that it could possibly change. That could just be a bad that's day correct, for you. Yeah. It could be a bad day yeah, for you. Yeah. And so 
if someone's a villain, I'm gonna trust them to be a villain. Yeah. If someone's not a nice person, I'm gonna trust them to not be a nice <laughs> yeah, person. That's true. Um, until they demonstrate differently for me. Right. And right. if they demonstrate differently for me, I'm like, okay, that was an off day for you. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting. I was curious. Thanks for watching. <laughs> What'd you think? Totally different, right? Not the same as it used to be. I've totally changed the format. I talk less, at least I try to. <laughs> Hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on the way things have changed. Do you like the new format? Do you like the way I'm, I'm asking the questions now? And help me reach 100 subscribers. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Let me know what you think. Get involved with the group, the Facebook group, the Conclave. All right, I'll see you on Wednesday.